Look at that, look at that, look at that. Look at that, look at that. Oh my gosh, I didn't bring it in. Oh. <laughs> Alright, hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back. Today I got something special for you guys. And that's one of my favorite techniques that's won me a lot of money here on the West Coast. Teach you guys a little bit about how I fish a spoon here in our deep California reservoir. This lake's gone up a lot too, so hopefully these fish are moving right up with the water. All right, you guys. So we're out here. We're gonna try to find, basically what I wanna look for, it's like the main channel, see where it's at. And of course, you wanna pay close attention. Looks like there's some bait fish already flickering around me. Water is super clear, so these fish should be able to spot this boom from a mile away, especially with all the flash that it gives off. I don't know if that was a, that's definitely some fish down there. Let me see. All right, so basically, if I wanted to go down quick, I just keep the tension on my spool. Here you can kind of see my spoon dropping right down towards the fish and looks like are they going down they are going down at it that those might be bass so i'll give it a couple rips right in front of their face see if they react to it there's a lot of carp in this lake too so those might be carp now if they don't want it, i'll just keep dropping it to the bottom once it hits the bottom i like to give it some short rip just a couple short rip so it looks like an injured fish on the bottom usually they'll hit it right down there but if not, I'll start reeling it up, giving it longer hops. I'm not sure. oh, those do look like bass. It looks like we got a school of them out oh, here to the left of me. They're kind of just roaming around. sitting in 20 feet right here hopefully you guys can see the fish finder and so that those look like fish out to the side right there small groups looks like some kind of rock structure to my right and it seems like those fish went right down to the rock they're not really a uh, spaghetti like earlier. Same thing, I just want to feed it all the way down to the bottom. There you go, it's on the bottom. Give it a couple rips, see if they'll grab it. Give it a good pull, just so it's swimming up. You know, sometimes when it's swimming up, they'll grab it on the way up too. So you want to change up the cadence all the time. Some good rocks out there too. Keep searching for these bait fish first. All right, so line of choice. I go with P line, 100% fluorocarbon, the blue box, uh, 15 pound. If it's uh, mainly the smaller spoon that I'm throwing, but if I'm planning to change it to, let's say like a six or eight, I'll spool up with 17 maybe 20 if i'm primarily throwing like the eight inch magnum spoon but for the most part um, this 4.75 seems to be the best size a lot of our lakes the shad don't get any bigger than this um, every once in a while you'll run into these uh bait balls where you can actually see the individual shad that's just how big they are down there and and this mimics them perfectly and when you find them that's usually when you find the better quality fish too, right behind him. And so for rod, this isn't really my spooning rod, but just for today, it, um, I'm throwing a 7.3. It's a medium heavy, it's got a nice bend. This is the Daiwa Saltis for ocean fishing. Um, I do a lot of frogging with this rod too, but it's got a nice bend on it. I do actually a lot of other techniques like square bills, crane baits and stuff. I'll throw it on this rod, chatterbait, same thing. It's got a nice bend to it. 
not super soft like a glass rod it's got just a perfect bend strong backbone gets the job done it loads up really nice uh real this is a old school og Daiwa zealand it's four and four nine originally but i swapped out the gear to an eight one and so this thing picks up line super fast especially when you make those long casts way out there and it's falling about halfway down you get hit like you're trying to pick up the slack you need that eight to one gear ratio at least a seven but i like the eight it picks up that line super quick and catches up to these fish so that's basically my setup nothing special you could definitely use any other rods like a jigging rod if you don't have a longer rod and you have a jigging rod that's like seven one or seven two that will work perfectly fine with these smaller spoons um, I wouldn't try throwing anything bigger. It's just going to be too much work on you on a shorter rod. And, you know, a long handle is crucial too because when you're just ripping it like this, this is kind of like the motion I like to uh, hop my spoons. You know, I drop it down all the way to the bottom and I'll hold it like this. And I give it, you know, these long strokes so it's just all the way up and back down to the bottom all the way up like the like if it's a shad trying to escape that usually does the job you can go and try to do this all day but you're just gonna throw all your shoulders your arms gonna give up i like to just do this it's a lot easier just kind of hold it right hand holding it and left hand kind of just pushing down and your wrist just barely moving up just like that you can definitely play with it, change up the cadence, give it some quick snap. But if your reel's right hand, you can also do it, you know, this way too. Just rip it like this. You can also pick up the pick up your slack by just the flick of a, your finger over here on the drag star. Just flick it, picks up the drag, just like that. And so when the fish bites, or if you feel your line hop. Boom, real quick, just grab that handle and start cranking. So here we are, we're approaching a high spot in this cove right here. And as you guys can see, there's some bait fish getting pushed up onto this hump out here or this long underwater point. And as you guys can see, it's starting to stick up over here. So don't be scared to throw this spoon up shallow too. I fished this past weekend at Lake Nascimento and I was catching them in less than five foot of water. And so I'm pretty close to the mouth of this cove right here. And uh, not really seeing much. The water temp's pretty warm. It's at 78 degrees. Water's coming up. Now we start searching. Now would be a good time to go to the back and see if they're back there. If they're not back there, I'll make my way out to the mouth. So right now what I'm doing is I already scanned around the back of this pocket. I didn't see any bait fish. I'm not gonna waste time. These spotted bass are notorious for just being there one day and gone the next or even as short as an hour window. They might be here just for that hour to feed and as soon as those bait fish are gone, the whole school is gone with them. So you don't want to waste too much time. Let's, let's make a move. I could see some activity on the surface. That's part why those seagulls keep running back and forth. Oh, you guys see that? That's exactly what I'm looking for. Something's pushing these big fish right to the surface. Oh, there you go. Oh, the guys. A big one. Uh, quick release. 
Right back down there. It's rolling it in. They're not big, but they're still fun. That one was just on a straight retrieve. All right, you guys, that's all the time I got for today. Hopefully, you guys learned something new. Uh, Spooning is not really that difficult, it can be kind of challenging if you've never done it before but once you get a hang of it it's pretty easy and it's fun once you find the right school and start um, catching them just about every cast and you don't want to put it down so if you guys like these videos let me know in the comment section if you guys learned something new or if you guys enjoyed it like the videos subscribe if you guys haven't and i'll see you guys on the next one